Hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and a warm welcome to the series called RBI 247. So guys, as you all know that in the series we discuss a set of five questions. So today we are going to discuss questions which are based on a particular topic. We are going to discuss questions based on bonds, right? So bonds is a very important topic and I hope you are going to find them beneficial. So let's not waste any time and move straight away to question number one. But before doing that, let me ask you to subscribe to our channel. So guys, if you are visiting our channel for the very first time and this is the first video that you are watching, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button as it can help you to get associated with us and you can enjoy uh, a lot of content which can be beneficial for you. Apart from that, you can also press this bell icon which will help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up, right? So are you ready for question number, uh, before question number one? Okay. You can also join our telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to resolve them as soon as possible. So, are you ready for question number one? Okay. Let's start with question number one. A very simple question which says, out of the following options, select the correct, correct one about different types of securities. Right? So, you have to select the correct, correct option. And the solution to this question is option C. Option C means money market which includes commercial paper and certificate of deposit. So guys, for answering these type of questions, first of all, you should know the meaning to the money market and the debt market, right? See, both of the markets, they have relevance because they are used for raising money. Companies or entities who need money, they can come into this market and raise money. Basically, it acts as a matching point, as a matchmaking point for the lenders and the borrowers, right? But what is the difference between the two? Let us know about that. Okay. Money market. Money market is relevant for raising short term funds. So the key word here is short term. Whereas debt market. Debt market is here for raising long term funds. Long term funds. So obviously the instruments are going to be different. Right. So under money market we usually have instruments like commercial paper, certificate of deposits and T-bills. I think uh, T-bills, most of us know that T-bills are T-bills are issued by government uh, for a very short duration, right? So money market including short term debt instruments whereas debt market including long term debt instruments like bonds, debentures and dated government securities, right? So uh, under this, we can also count state development loans. So guys, we have discussed state development loans in one of our previous sessions. Uh, let's see how many of you remember this. So without checking, you have to tell whether the state development loans, they are short term or whether they are long term instruments, right? And obviously by name, you can guess that states, uh, the, the states, they use uh, the, this instrument to raise money. So in the comments below, you have to mention whether it is a long term instrument or it is a short term instrument, right? So, this is one question for you and that is why option C is correct here, right? Here in option 1, money market, commercial paper, short term but dated G6, uh, dated G securities, long term, right? Debt market, treasury bills, bonds. So, bonds long term but treasury bills short term. Debt market, debentures, long term, commercial paper, short term. So, money market, Bonds long term but certificate of deposits short term, right? So, this is the only one having correct options. So, this is question number one. Moving ahead to the next question for today. Okay, here is your question number two, which talks about some topic called tracks. So, okay, following are some statements about tracks, you have to select the correct one. Five statements, you have to select the one which uh, talks correctly about TREPS, right? So, moving ahead to solution, guys, you can pause the video and read the statements carefully and then select your answer. Okay, the correct answer for this question is option A. Okay, option A, which means TREPS is a type of repo contract where a third entity called a tri-party entity acts as an intermediary between two parties to the repo to facilitate services. Okay, this seems a little complicated. Let us first try to understand the meaning of a repo 
contract and a reverse repo contract. See, repo contract, very simple. Repo comes from the word repurchase, right? In simple terms, if you have some securities, right? So you have got some investments, you have got some securities with yourself and you want to raise money by using them. How can you do so? You can enter into repo agreement with another parties who is looking to lend money for securities, right? So uh, you can enter into a short term selling instrument. So you are not actually interested in selling your securities, but you just want money for short term. So let's say there are two parties, A and B. A having securities want to raise funds, right? So A talks to B and tells them, that you purchase my securities now. So I will give you securities. You give me money. Right? So A's need of money is fulfilled and B is getting securities. Now, what is the benefit to B? After some time, let's say after three months or after six months, when the contract expires, A is going to buy the same securities back, but at a little bit higher price. So B earns the difference. Let's say A is selling securities worth 10,000 to B. So B gives 10,000 to A. But after six months, when A has to buy securities back from B, that is why the agreement is called repurchase or repo because A is buying securities back from B, right? So when A has to buy the securities back, it buys back at, let's say, 12,000 rupees. So A's immediate need of cash is fulfilled by selling the securities and after that when it is done with the money it gets its securities back whereas B it bought the securities for 10,000 and now it has sold the securities for 12,000. So he makes a profit of 2,000. So that is the incentive for party B. That is a repo contract. right? So repo is an instrument for borrowing funds by selling security with an agreement to repurchase the securities on a mutually agreed future date at agreed price which also includes interest for the borrowed funds. So this 2000, the difference of 2000, it acts as uh, an interest which B is earning on lending money on the basis of securities, right? So this is a repo contract. Now where does TREPS come into scene, right? So see reverse repo is just opposite of repo, reverse repo is in instrument for lending of securities, right? Here you can see in this diagram, okay, there is a lender, there is a borrower guild account, there is a lender guild account and there is a lender, there is a borrower and there is an agent in between. So basically when between this lender and borrower, this lender lending on the basis of securities, borrower raising money on the basis of securities. When between them there is a third party that is going to facilitate many services uh, connecting them and then deciding terms and conditions, deciding the amount of collateral. All those services are performed by this uh, third party, this tri-party, then this is called TREPS. Tri-party repo arrangement or agreement or scheme, right? So, tri-party repo. So, there is a lender, there is a borrower, there is a tri-party in between. As you can see here, through borrower, securities are going to get transferred to the lender. Through lender, the cash is going to get transferred to the borrower. And after the, uh, after the contract expires, the opposite happens, right? So, this is TREPS. That is why the correct option was see. Here you can see the intermediary or TREPS uh, performs, the tri-party performs services like collateral selection, payment and settlement, custody and management during life of transaction, right? So this is TREPS, uh, a type of repo contract where third party acts as an intermediary between the lender and the borrower by performing services, right? I hope now you are clear with this. Moving ahead. Okay, uh, there's a question for you. So this preps, uh, it's it's not an old system. So it replaced some kind of other system. So you have to mention in the comments which was the system which was followed before preps coming into scene, right? 
So let's see who answers correctly. Here is the third question for today, which says which of the following, uh, which of the following investments, which of the following investments is free from reinvestment risk, right? Simple question, moving ahead to the solution and the solution says that the correct option is option E. Option E means zero coupon bonds. So I think this is a very simple term. Most of you would be knowing meaning to zero coupon bonds. For those of you who don't, uh, I'll explain it in, it in brief. See, zero coupon bonds, as the name suggests, that there is zero coupon rate or there is no coupon rate. Let's say there is a bond which has a face value of rupees 1000, but it is selling at a discount and you are able to purchase it for 900 for let's say six months. So now you have bought the bond for rupees 900 and when six months expire, when the contract expires, you get the face value back because the redemption is done on face value. So you are going to get 1000 back. You have bought something for 900 and now you are getting 1000 for it. So there is no coupon rate. Usually on bonds, what happens is uh, there is a fixed coupon rate or uh, a rate which is linked to some other quantity, some other amount. But here in zero coupon bonds, no coupon rate, only the difference between the price at which the investor bought the bond and the price at which uh, bond is getting redeemed. So the difference between them is uh, a sort of reward for the bond holder, right? So this is a zero coupon bond. Now, why is zero coupon bond free from reinvestment risk? First of all, we have to understand the meaning of reinvestment risk. What is the meaning of reinvestment? So the name suggests reinvestment. You are investing something again. So basically reinvestment means that if you are investing somewhere, right, and then you have to exit that investment, whether you will be able to find another investment opportunity which pays you, uh, which pays you a reward which you were getting on the earlier in, in the earlier investment scheme. So that is reinvestment risk. Let's say I invest in something, I invest in some investment scheme on which I get 10% per annum, right? But after that, I have to liquor the, the scheme expires and I get my money back. And then I'm able to invest my money at 8%. So obviously I'm seeing a loss because earlier I was getting 10% as reward. So this is reinvestment risk. But let's say if this investment have been longer, I would have, I would be getting a higher uh, rate of return, a higher reward for a longer time, right? So this is reinvestment risk. Okay. Here you can see reinvestment, uh, the example is given here. A holds one year bond which pays rupees 5% as coupon rate. After one year, interest market interest rates falls to 4%. So it was a one year bond. This bond is going to expire and money is going to be uh, back in the hands of Mr. A. Now Mr. A looks for some other opportunity. But since the market interest rate, it has fallen. He is not able to get a comparable rate of interest. So A would not be able to earn a similar return. This is reinvestment risk. Now why are zero coupon bonds free from it? Because they are not paying you any coupon rate, right? So this is so because they do not pay any interest rate and they are redeemed at face value, right? So basically you are not earning a fixed income on it that you can compare to the next security. You already know that you are going to be redeemed at fixed face value, right? So basically there is no scene of coupon rate. That is why it is free from reinvestment risk. But callable bonds, callable bonds are at a, uh, they are vulnerable to reinvestment risk because as the issuer calls the bond back, see, what are callable bonds? Under callable bonds, it is uh, the, the, the person or the ent sorry, the entity who has issued the bonds can call the bonds back whenever it is beneficial for them, right? So uh, the issuer might, uh, the issuer might call the bonds back and then you might not be able to get such an interest which you were earlier getting on it, right? So moving ahead to question number four, here is question number four, which says, Buddha is thinking, 
of investing into some bonds but his major concern is rising inflation now he has a view that bonds being a fixed income security are not protected from inflation and inflation that eats up into the income from such assets but going for assets that are inflation index might not provide him with required safety as bonds do right um but going for assets that are inflation index might not provide him with safety because uh, if he goes for equity he might not get the safety that he is getting in bonds but his brother bablu who is a financial advisor tells him that there exists a category of bonds so basically you are getting both the benefits you are getting inflation protection and you are getting the benefit the safety associated with the bond which type of bonds do you think bablu is talking about five options you have to select the correct one moving ahead to the correct option and the correct option for this question is option b option b means real return bonds right real return bonds also known as inflation indexed bonds basically these bonds the return on these bonds is associated or it is linked to an index parameter or or a parameter which measures inflation so if inflation rises the reward on these bonds also rises right so inflation index bond or bonds or the real return bonds are going to be suitable for goods needs also called inflation index bonds offer inflation protection that ordinary bonds cannot provide and apart from being inflation index they are also providing the security of a bond the safety feature associated with a conventional bond so bonds pay out a coupon but there is an additional bonus as there is an incremental payment based on the level of inflation let's say uh, if inflation rises 2% the reward on these bonds is also going to rise 2% or in some proportion to it so these type of bonds do not perform well in deflationary times because if inflation goes down the reward on these bonds it goes down moving ahead to the last question for today so here is the last question which says from the options given below choose the statement that correctly describes about different types of risk bonds are exposed to so five options given to you you have to select the correct option moving ahead to the solution and the correct option is option e option e means short term bond is exposed to lower interest rate risk so a short term bond is exposed to lower interest rate risk now let us see why this one is correct and others are not correct okay talking about default risk at first see default risk means that you have bought uh, bonds from from an entity and that entity is not going to pay you back so default risk basically depends upon the credit worthiness of the bond issuer right so there is no role of the uh, term of bond default risk's major concern is with credit worthiness of the issuer right so if the issuer is credit worthy default risk is going to be less and opposite if not credit worthy right so that is why we are not linking maturity of the bond to default risk so after that inflation risk now coming to inflation risk since bonds are fixed income securities they are considered to be fixed income securities apart from uh, except some categories like real return bonds uh, conventional bonds are considered to be fixed income but the point is that if inflation rises right so there is some safety in bonds so you are getting let's say a 5% return on bonds but the prices of goods and services around you are rising faster than you are earning that is why it is going to lead to a loss of your purchasing power so higher the coupon rate on bonds higher the inflation risk this does not make any sense because inflation risk it depends upon the comparison between inflation and the reward on the bond or investment right so higher and basically it depends upon inflation obviously if the coupon rate is higher then it is going to be beneficial for the investor and if the coupon rate is higher so the major concern in inflation risk is inflation and if the coupon rate is higher then it is going to be a benefit for the bond holder because he is getting more reward so that reduces inflation risk that is why this statement is also wrong after that 
Third statement says lesser the coupon rate on bonds, higher is the default risk. Similar logic, default risk depends upon credit worthiness. That is why we are not comparing it with coupon rate. Coming to option D, option D says higher the coupon rate, higher is the interest rate risk. Okay, now talking about interest rate risk. What does it mean? Interest rate risk, it means, so guys, if you remember, when we discussed about operation twist, we uh, discussed in detail that how the price of the bond and market interest rates, they are inversely related to each other. So if interest rate rises, the price of your bond is going to fall. If the interest rate falls, then the price of your bond is going to be uh, more. Right? So if you want to know the logic behind it, why is it so and what is the logic behind the relationship, you can watch that video. That was RBI 247 day 8 question number 1. Right? It is going to help you understand this. So now coming to the point, interest rate risk refers to that if market interest rate rises, then the price of your bond is going to fall. And if you are concerned with selling the bond before maturity, then this is going to be a concern for you. Right? So, the higher the market interest rate, the lower is going to be the price of the bond. Right? So, interest rate risk. See, but the point here is, if the coupon rate on the bond is higher, then it is difficult to match up the coupon rate that is being offered by issuer. Let's take an example. It might seem a little complicated. Uh, let's say there is a company, A Limited. A Limited issues some bonds which is providing 10% coupon rate. Let's say in the market, the interest rate is about 9%. So, if you invest into some other investment opportunity, you are getting about 9% return for the same risk return trade off. But if you invest in this bond, you are getting 10% coupon rate. So, that is why it is more attractive to you and you will be willing to pay a higher price for it. Right? So, this is this. Now, let's consider a situation where this market interest rate, it rises to 11%. Now, if you invest somewhere else, apart from this bond, the, the return is going to be higher. That is 11% compared to 10% of this. That is why you would not want to buy this bond. And to sell you this bond, the, uh, the price of the bond should be lower. Right? So, higher interest rate, lower the price of the bond. See, but if the coupon rate is higher, it is going to be difficult to match up to it. Let's say if this coupon rate was 15%, then... If, it, if the interest rate rises from 9 to 11, doesn't make doesn't matter because the coupon rate is still higher. And even if it rises to 12% or 13% or 14%, doesn't matter. But yes, if it rises more than 50, if it becomes more than 15%, then it is going to reduce the price of the bond. So higher the coupon rate, the difficult it is to match up to it and lower is the interest rate risk. This is wrong. Higher the coupon rate, lower is the interest rate risk. After that, the last statement says, short term bonds exposed to lower interest rate risk. Yes, because the interest rate risk depends upon two factors. Here you can see. Okay. So this is interest rate risk. Interest rate risk depending upon two factors. Maturity of the bond and coupon payment. So coupon payment, we just discussed higher the coupon payment, lesser the risk. Higher the coupon payment, lower is the interest rate risk. Now talking about the maturity. See, the longer the maturity, the more is the interest rate risk. Because see, the bond is the, the term of the bond is going to be lower. So there are more chances of fluctuations in the market interest rate. And that is why there is more risk. Because a longer term bond that is exposed to longer time and that is why there are more chances of fluctuations into interest rate risk or it provides longer time for change into economics, economy, uh, economic conditions which can change the interest rate. Right? So higher chance of interest rate change in case of a long term bond and that is why the longer the maturity of the bond the higher is the interest rate risk. The lower the, the higher the coupon payment, the lower is the interest rate risk. 
So I think we discussed in one of the video and most of you were having some problems with this question, right? Uh, there was a doubt by Amit. Uh, let me just check. Amit was also asking about this. Okay, Amit was asking that the... Uh, so price of high coupon rate bonds are less sensitive to market interest rate changes. So I mean this is the same logic that is why I told you higher the coupon payment lower is the interest rate risk. So high coupon bonds they are less sensitive to interest rate changes because it is difficult to match up to that coupon payment being offered by the issuer. So I hope your doubt is cleared after this I mean. And there were some more doubts about the maturity some people were having problem uh, linking the maturity of the bond to the interest rate risk that is involved. I hope this clears your doubt and still if you have any problems you can mention, you can always mention them on the comments, right? That is why the last point is, the last statement is correct. Short term bond is exposed to lower interest rate risk because there are less chances of interest rate changing, right? So guys, these, are the, these were the five questions for today. I hope you found these questions beneficial and if you did, then do not forget to hit the like button because I'll be back in next session with some more information. Till then you take care of yourself, take care of your health and keep your studies going on. Right? So thank you for being here.